Hello, 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 and welcome to another Angry Unit of the Reek. And today, we'll be taking a look at the American Demolition Group. So you've seen the history section part of this video, where I try to talk about the unit history when it comes to infantry most of the time. But in regards to the Demolition Group in particular, there's not a whole lot of information. Essentially, they're just meant to represent the close quarters urban warfare specialists in the 2nd Infantry Division, once they started fighting over Brest later on in the D-Day campaign, they were given flamethrowers and bazookas to blow up German positions. So instead of talking about yeah, in particular, because that's really all I have to talk about it, let's talk about one of their weapons and a very cool one at yeah, the M2 Carbine. So the M2 Carbine is essentially just an M1 Carbine, but with the ability to shoot fully automatic fire, there are some minor modifications made between the M1 to the M2. Your M1 Carbines could be converted into M2 Carbines. The main reason for the M1 Carbine originally was that for rear echelon troops, they were either having to lug around a M1 Garand rifle, which is, well, a bit heavy, or a pistol, which, if you get into a firefight, isn't really going to serve you all that well, so an intermediate weapon which could kind of be not as heavy as a rifle but more firepower on a pistol was needed. That's when the Amron Carbine came into play. It wasn't just issued to cooks and artillery crewmen, it eventually see service in the front line, most notably with US paratroopers. And the M1 slash M2 carbine were both pretty damn good rifles. The main drawback is that the magazines were apparently pretty bad. After you had to reload them a few times, the magazines would essentially break and not feed properly, so you just have to keep replacing the magazines instead of just reloading them all the time. However, M2 carbines saw very little service in the second world draw, with only them um, really being put into service by 1945, with some experimental models being tested before that. However, after the Second World War, the M2 carbine would see much more prominent service. It would be used in the Korean War by US troops, and also into the Vietnam War by US troops, South Vietnamese troops, and even Korean troops who served. In game, the Demolition Group are a 35 point unit of assault engineers available exclusively to the Second Infantry Division and they have four weapons. So the weapon loadout is pretty diverse. You have two M2 Carbine Experimental, nine M1 Garands, an M2 Flamethrower, and an M1 Bazooka. This is a pretty awesome weapon loadout. The M2 Carbines are like M1 Carbines, but shoot a bit faster because they have fully automatic fire. The Garands are well, uh, semi-automatic rifles, which mean they're pretty bloody good. The flamethrower is a flamethrower, and the bazooka means you can blow up tanks. You have pretty good short range to mid range firepower capabilities, but no machine guns for any long range engagements. Up down to miscellaneous set, it's a 12 man squad with good optics, good stealth, and heavy cargo space. In battle, the demolition group are a rather odd unit. It's a kind of a general specialist, but they're pretty good for being a general specialist unit. What I mean by that is that they can perform well in multiple different engagement scenarios. Most range, have a bloody flamethrower, which will definitely make the enemy a little bit hot, probably a little bit too hot. And at medium range, you have a bunch of semi-automatic rifles, as well as M2 carbines. In forest fights, it's going to perform very well, because you have the flamethrower. And even though you don't have a whole heap of SMGs, the semi-automatic rifles in the M2 carbines do a decent job of at least matching the firepower to some SMG scrotch, especially if they're smaller in size. So the main thing is I find demolition groups to be very good in town fights. As town fights are a little bit deceiving on certain maps where it feels like we're going to be engaged in always at under 100 meters. But really most town fights are medium range engagement distances where you're shooting over 200 meters. And with the 300 meter M2 carbines and the 500 meter semi-automatic rifles, you can perform pretty well in said town fights. If enemy charges you, you have flamethrower to get them to bagger off, and with your rather large 12 man squad, you can survive quite a bit of casualties. But really, the main benefit of the demolition group is the bazooka. 
because one of the main problems with the 2nd Infantry Division is you don't have much infantry AT. I mean, you've got like the Rangers Marauders, Rifle Leaders, and then Bazookas, but that's really it. So having a little bit of extra anti-tank firepower, especially on a rather beefy squad which you are going to be throwing into town fights, is a rather nice compliment to have, as that will pretty much blow up any nasty Panzer Fours or Stugs or insert armored unit here, which tries to blow you up in said town. The weird thing though is its availability. Because the Demolition Group are trying to simulate the Close Quarters Specialists, which were fighting at Brest, which was later on in the Norman DD Day campaign, they're only available in C phase. They do have pretty good availability with Trove Unvetted, 8 1 Star Veterancy, and 4 with 2 Star Veterancy. Frankly, I think the Unvetted rule works just fine, as you don't really need to be as experienced to shoot a flamethrower. But overall, they're a good all-round unit with some rather nice specialist capabilities thrown in. You can't really go wrong with taking demolition groups. You're all going to have to wait a little bit before you can get these bad boys onto the field. And well, I'm going to leave it off at yeah. This has been another Rang Rouge unit of the week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as usual, please just take it easy.